continue in, today we will be working on how to find the rule or that numerical expression for an input-output table. So your input is always the first row or the first column. So you could see it like this. Or that first column you come to. The second row or the second column, that is your output. <clears throat> So in this case, we see that um, a factory cuts circles from sheets of paper to make stickers. For each sheet of paper they put in a machine, they get a certain number of stickers out. So we put in one piece of paper and we're getting out eight stickers. We put in two pieces of paper, we're getting out 16 stickers. So we are actually going to a larger number. So since we are getting a larger number as our outcome, we are either adding or we are multiplying. So one plus, and then I'm gonna say seven, because one plus seven would get me my output of eight. So one times eight would get me my output of eight. But your rule has to stay the same for the entire table, right? Because this is a pattern. So patterns repeat, they stay the same. So in this case, our rule has to be the same for each one. So now I'm going to check. Is 2 plus 7 16? Well, that answer would be no, because we know that 2 plus 7 is 9. So no, we're not adding. So we must be multiplying. But let's check. Is 1 times 8 8? Yes. Is 2 times 8 16? Yes. Is 3 times 8 24? Yes. Is 4 times 8 32? Yes is 5 times 8, 40, and is 6 times 8, 48. Those are both a yes. So now it says, what equation can you write to describe the process between the number of sheets of paper and the number of stickers produced? So our rule would be our input, which is sheets of paper, and then times 8, that's that numerical expression, our rule, is going to equal our number of stickers. Okay. So patterns can be used to describe in a general way by using the words input and output. Inputs are numbers that you start with, whereas outputs are the number you're getting out, right? It's the result. So inputs affect what your output will be. So let's look here. A bike factory assembles five bikes in one hour. And oh, I need to change this number to 20 and 20 bikes in four hours. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in that information. If the number of bikes made each hour is the same, how many bikes are made in one hour? So I put in five bikes, I'm getting out one hour. So five bikes took me one hour. 20 bikes took me four hours. So I'm actually going to a smaller number. So I would either be subtracting or I would be dividing. So in this case, five minus four is one and five divided by five is one. 20 minus four is not four though. So I'm not subtracting, I must be dividing. Five divided by uh, 5 is 1, 20 divided by 5 is 4. So I know that the bikes for each hour is 5. So now I'm going to fill in my number of bikes. I'm going to say 5, 10, 15, um, and then we're going to go 25 and 35. So, right, we want to complete the table to figure out how many bikes are assembled in seven hours. So, I just kept adding five across the top here until I got, like, towards the end um, because I skipped a number here because we're trying to find in seven hours. Ten divided by five is two. Fifteen divided by five is three. Twenty-five divided by five is five. And thirty-five divided by five is seven. So I know that in seven hours, 35 bikes were made. 
you could have used the inverse. So inverse is the opposite operation. So I could have said one hours, and then I could have said two hours. Well, I know if my rule was to divide by five, I could use the inverse, the opposite, to find the input. So the opposite of division is multiplication. So I could have said two times five is 10, three times five is 15, four times five is 20, five times five is 25, and seven times five is 35. So now I have to write that equation, which would be bytes divided by five gets you your hours. And then this just repeats the, the process. So let's go ahead and do this. I know I'm going to a smaller number if I look here, 100 and I'm going all the way to five. So I'm either subtracting and that would be by 95 or I would be dividing and that would be by 20. So how many blocks are in nine boxes? Well, let's fill out the table. So we know that there are 100 blocks in five boxes boxes. There are 60 blocks in three boxes, and there are 80 blocks in four boxes. Well, can I even take 80 minus 95? No. So then I have to be dividing. So that would be my answer. I'm dividing. So let's fill this out. 40 divided by 20, or turn it around and think what times 20 gets me to 40, which would be 2. And then same thing here, I don't have my input, so I have to use that inverse operation. The opposite of 20, the inverse of divide by 20 would be to multiply by 20. So I would take nine times 20, which would get me 180. So there are 180 blocks in nine boxes. And then my equation would be block, divided by 20 is going to equal the number of boxes that I need. And this next part, it gives you all your information, but make sure that you are reading carefully because your input is the number of tickets. Your output is the cost. And in this problem, it words it backwards. It costs $30 to buy two tickets. So two tickets cost me $30. It costs me $60 to buy four tickets, and it costs me $120 to buy eight tickets. It wants to know the cost of seven tickets, and I just chose five and seven so we can complete our table. So now I have to find the rule. So I put in, I bought two tickets, I paid 30. I bought four tickets, I paid 60. So I am going to a larger number. So I'm either adding or I'm multiplying. So two plus 28 gets me to 30. Two times 15 gets me to 30. Is four plus 28 60? Well, the answer to that is no. So then I must be multiplying. And four times 15 is 60 and eight times 15 is 120. So now I know that my equation is going to be that my tickets times 15 is going to get me my cost. So now I multiply 15 times five to fill in for my cost of how, many, uh, how much I spent for five tickets. So I write my multiples of five. So that's five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. Five times five is 25. So I leave the five, I carry the two. Five times one is five plus two is seven. So I know five tickets cost me 75. So now let's find seven tickets. So that would be 15 times seven, and I write my multiples of seven. So seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, 49, 56, and 63. Seven times five is 35, so I leave the five. I regroup the three. Seven times one is seven, plus three makes 10. 
So seven tickets would cost $105. I hope that this has been helpful.